So what you're going to need to do is just cut around the circle and just make sure it's even. See if it fits on top. So I'm just evening out the rest. So for this, we're going to be doing um, Northern Lights themed globe. So it's sort of like a snow globe, but we're going to be doing it a really um, sort of artistic, creative version of it, uh, painted. So I'm starting off by just using a brush and I'm putting some water on the page before I apply my watercolour because that's a really good way of sort of setting a base for it to spread across the page and for it to soak it in. So I'm adding some glue. So I added some glue here. So throughout, as I said, I'm going to be giving some facts about the Northern Lights. So I'm just adding some blue. So the colours that you sometimes get on the Northern Lights, so the most uh, sort of frequent colour to come up is yellowy green. And then you can also get um, pink and red and green. You can get a whole spectrum of colours and sometimes you can even see white grey. So the way the Northern Lights work are the Earth is surrounded by magnetic fields and then the Northern Lights happen when gas particles collide with charged particles from the Sun. And it depends on which types of gas particles collide um, and exist and that sort of decides the colours. So you can find a lot of different pictures online of the Northern Lights, but I have put up a couple and I will try and put up a couple throughout so you can see sort of uh, the different ways that they look. Uh, but basically the Northern Lights never look the same. So um, they will never look the same twice. So they're always really unique. Um, a lot of people from all around the world go to certain places so that they can see the Northern Lights um and you know they're like a very magical thing that people try and see a lot um against common misconception a lot of people think that uh you have to be lucky to see the northern lights because sometimes they're not visible they're always so so they're not always visible but it's not that they're not always there they're always there uh it just depends on the weather so the sort of sky visibility um, it's not to do with how cold it is, because a lot of people think that it has to be really cold for the Northern Lights to come out. It's to do with sort of uh, the sky visibility and the clouds in the sky. And the reason that the Northern Lights are visible uh, for such a wide range, so you can see them in a lot of different places. You can see them in Norway, Sw Sweden, Greenland, Iceland, and also parts of Canada and Alaska which is really cool. So the reason you can see them is because they're so high up in the sky. So the lowest they've ever been to Earth, the closest, is 80 kilometres, but they're usually 90 to 130 kilometres above Earth. So this means that they're visible for several hundred um, kilometres away, which is really cool. That's why you can sort of see them from a lot of different viewpoints. So as I said, a lot of people travel to see them because they're sort of like a natural light display and people have been observing them as early as 1619. So another name for them is Aurora Borealis. So I learned about um, the Northern Lights in school when I was in geography class but I thought this would be a really cool craft activity because I think they're a really beautiful natural phenomenon and also it'd be really nice to learn about them while you paint them. So other planets have uh, their own aurora borealises or auroras, uh, including Saturn, Uranus, Neptune and Jupiter. So you can see them from space. So like astronauts have reported they've seen them from space. 
So another cool thing is that southern lights exist. It's not just northern lights. I didn't realise this until I was researching. But southern lights are visible from places such as uh, New Zealand. But uh, they are sort of less popular because they are less visible and also like less visible from um, as many viewpoints. Also, just an update on what I'm doing. I am using a uh, sort of kitchen roll or like uh, pe- kitchen towel paper uh, because I sort of applied too much uh, paint and it was just not looking good. So I wanted to like edit it and carry on uh, in a different way. So sometimes just dabbing the paper with some uh kitchen towel or kitchen paper um like disposable stuff um is really helpful so I like sort of went over the colors I'm not gonna lie I was quite incisive on this but I was really happy with the way it ended up in the end I was trying to get the blues and purples (laughs) um but I don't know I found it quite hard to get the mix of colors Because I think I had an image of what I wanted it to look like in my head. And it wasn't quite getting there. But, yes. So in the sky I was trying to sort of get, like... I was using my brush to get different colours and shades and patterns in the sky. But I also wanted it to look, like, super blended. Uh, So I added some more... Was adding like dark greeny blues. And I also added some little bits of yellow and limey green. So as I said, a lot of people think they look magical. Um I think they have a really like enchanting feeling to them. So I kind of wanted to get that across. And I think sort of a snow globe has that vibe anyway. Plus we're going to be adding some glitter which you have in your box. And you have PVA glue. Which gives it the sort of snow globe vibe. But also I think it has like the magical aspect too. So I'm adding some streaks of different colours. So it's just kind of trying to blend it out. And make different textures. And also like... When I added the paint afterwards and also when I was doing it, I was sort of doing it in a circular motion because I kind of, while I was doing the sky, I was also imagining it was a snow globe. So like imagining the glass and the colours that, how the colours were seen through glass, if that makes sense. So I added some pink in as well because they're a common colour in the Aurora Borealis. Here I'm just adding some lighter greens. So at this point I'm sort of just adding, um, so I'm going to put in some pictures of the Aurora, <laughs> Aurora Borealis uh, to sort of show you. Like also satellites as I said, so astronauts can sometimes see uh, the lights from space. Satellites can also take pictures of the Aurora from Earth's orbit and the images are amazing so I'm going to put on some of this.
so a cool thing is so like the lights sort of look like they'd be fiery but they really aren't uh, the temperature of the upper atmosphere can reach thousands of degrees fahrenheit but the heat is based on the average speed of molecules so the density of the air is so low that it sort of wouldn't be hot at all it'd be rather cold even though they look like they'd be super hot a frustrating thing is a lot of people try and see them but you can't predict um sort of like what it'll look like or whether it'll be visible the day that you go so it's kind of just luck So the first person to describe the phenomenon as aurora borealis was in 1619, as I said, and it was Galileo, who is an Italian astronomer and philosopher. And the name aurora borealis comes from the Roman goddess of dawn, aurora, and the Greek word for north, wind, boreas. So that's the specific words for northern lights. So even though sort of it was named in 1619, uh, drawings of the Northern Lights have been found in ancient cave paintings in France dating back from 30,000 years ago, which is crazy. So apart from the sort of beautiful light display, the lights also produce a sound which has been described as a similar sound to applause, so people clapping. Um, so there is a sound that comes from them which is really cool. You can look that up on YouTube. So as well as the, pat uh, the colours, you can also get a lot of different patterns which is to do with the particles colliding. So I was trying to kind of like recreate those but it's quite tricky so you can go for any colors you want they don't have to be the colors that i described there's a whole spectrum of colors as i said the the sort of usual ones to go for might be uh, blue pink green yellow but you could go for any that you wanted So now I am sort of painting on some, I use some black watercolour paint to paint on some um, trees and I also did a little house. Um, obviously anything, can, you could do mountains, you could do trees, you could do landscapes, you could do, um, it depends on where you're seeing it because obviously you'll have different backdrops, um, you could do water, a lake, so you can draw anything that you'd like, you could draw people watching it, but I think uh, the sort of black trees and the black outlines, sort of silhouettes um, of the house that I'm going to draw look really cool because they contrast against the uh, sort of bright greens that I put in the background. So I'm sort of adding on these little buildings that I mentioned. So a cool thing is, I said about the height of the northern lights. 
But a fact is that the deeper the red of the aurora is, the higher it is in the sky. Because the, the solar particles present in oxygen uh, are higher levels than normal. And it could be as far as 400 miles away. So even though you can see it, uh, viewing the Northern Lights through the camera is the best way to see it because uh, the human eye doesn't see it in its full capacity because of the eye sensitivity to colours but also the speed of the aurora's movement too. We can't like quite capture that in our eyes so that's why it's advisable to use a camera with a quick shutter speed as you can identify colours and appreciate the sight more, which is cool. So a cool thing is, um, I live in England and somewhere nearby is Scotland, uh, the Isle of Skye. So that's somewhere you can see a really, really lovely view of the Northern Lights sometimes because um, the place that it's in, so there's like really clear pollution free skies and this means it's a great place for stargazing and sort of like a wide open space which sometimes you can see the northern lights from. So in Norway, you can even see the lights from when you're in the city. So you could even draw sort of a cityscape uh, underneath the lights. So here I'm just adding some pink on. At this point I was just kind of going with it because I wasn't really happy with the colours that I was doing. But I was feeling like it might pull itself together, which it did. So a cool thing is the sort of different shapes as I've described, the patterns in the sky. So I tried to just sort of go free with that. Um, and create some swirly patterns. Just add in some more white in, lilac -y colours. And some more of that sort of turquoisey green going all the way down to the trees. So I'm just carrying on adding some colours and blending it in. Sometimes if you add some more water to the page, 
it can help to blend the different colours but honestly just go with what you feel looks nice it doesn't have to be necessarily scientifically accurate mine probably isn't uh but sort of just go with whatever you think looks best i've sort of been doing it in the circular motion you don't have to do it like that so i'm sort of blending all the colors and joining them all up So this is it so far. Okay, so we are on to the next stage. So it's sort of dried a bit. I would give it a good amount of time to dry and then I would go in with a black marker or any other markers that you want to use. You could use the markers to create more patterns in the sky, but I just stuck to using the black marker to sort of create those uh contrasting silhouettes that I was talking to talking about before so I'm using the pen over the top because sometimes with watercolors you need a couple of layers to for, to get it pigmented um and to sort of like get a color that stands out so I really wanted the silhouettes to stand out so I used the black black marker to help that out So I'm also going in with a white marker as well, just for the highlights. But you can definitely go in with any colour markers or you could go in with some white paint on this bit uh, just to like sort of get highlights. Then I went in with the white. Uh, you could also use yellow. You could use any colour that you want uh, to draw some little stars. I think this bit looks really cute. So I was sort of inspired by a particular picture of the Northern Lights, but also I just kind of went with whatever I felt looked good for the stars. And then I started to sort of make little lines, which I kind of felt represented the outside of the globe, but also kind of like shooting stars. So I'm just carrying on adding the stars and doing little lines. I'm really liking how it's looking so far. So I also really like the contrast with uh, the sort of bright white and the really colourful backgrounds. So I gave it a minute to dry. <laughs> And then I started adding the glue on the back. I spilt a bit, but oh well. And I added quite a bit of PVA glue on the back, so the liquidy glue, because I felt like it really needed to stick down and it needed a good amount of glue to sort of stick it onto the cardboard because you don't want it peeling off all of your beautiful artwork you've done. So I'm just using the paintbrush and then I'm going to stick it down and it's okay if you don't get in place because it's pretty movable. So I moved it over a little bit and then just use your hands and press down. Make sure it's dry at this point so you don't get paint all over your hands but just press down and sort of make sure it sticks. You can always add some paint around the edges if it's not quite glued with a paintbrush and then the next thing I'm doing is adding some of the liquid glue and I am putting some of my glitter on so I had some dark pink glitter I kind of wish that I had some sort of like silver or white glitter or gold glitter but you work with what you've got I think you might have some different color glitter to me so I would just add so sort of what I did was add few bits of glitter you can obviously add as much as you want but I kind of felt I wanted like the glitter to stand out so I only added it to little bits in the sky 
and I think as I said before it gives it that magical feel Just doing the finishing touches, adding a little bit more glue. I feel like I added a bit too much glitter, but you live and you learn. Just adding little bits on. So I really hope that you have learned some more facts about the Northern Lights. And I really hope you've enjoyed doing this piece of artwork. You could put it up. You could... Hmm, you could give it to someone. You can do so many different types. So you could look at the team video, which is focused on sort of cityscapes. You can do so many of these. So they're a really fun project. There's just one last step that we need to go through. Okay, so lastly, you should be able to find a coloured piece of card, which should be A4, so normal size, printer paper size. Uh, and you should be able to draw with a pencil or a pen, sort of like a base for the snow globes. I forgot what it was called then. Um, but you can use the bottom of the snow globe cardboard to sort of trace around or you can do it freehand. But sort of we're just creating like a little base to make it look, look more like a snow globe rather than just a circle. So I'm just cutting around it. I sort of gave a bit more room than I thought I'd need just so I can sort of have room to slot it in and stick it. But that's up to you. You also don't have to add the base. I just thought it'd be a nice fun add-on to sort of make it look, look, why can't I say words today? Look more snow globey. So here I am, just cutting out the base. So I may as well say this now, I would love to see your designs as usual. You can do this in two ways. So you can email it to mary at campmorty.com or you can tag us on Instagram at campmorty. So you can do either of those and they will reach me and I'll be able to see all of your different snow globes and it would be so cool. I'd love to see them. I'd love to see your different take on the Northern Lights and the Aurora Borealis. <laughs> so what I'm doing now, I also spilt some glue. We love that. And I'm going to just try and glue it in the middle, which is a bit tricky. So maybe when you're gluing down onto the cardboard in the previous stage, leave a little bit of a space for you to slot it in if you want to add the base. You can't actually see me doing this because I'm off camera, which is unhelpful. But I'm just adding a little bit more glue on to secure. So I'm just trimming round because there's a bit of overlap. And I think we are done. So I'm going to show you the base quickly. And that's what it's like. And that is my glitter. Florence, what's your thoughts? Oh, seems to like it. Success.